everyone. In this video, we are going to start with Unit 8, Transport in Plants from Cambridge IGCSC Biology Syllabus and the paper code is 0610. In this video, we are mainly going to discuss about the meaning of word transportation and we are going to learn about the adaptations and functions of different tissues present in plants which actually helps plant in the process of transportation. So let's begin with this. Uh, generally, uh, transportation is a very important life process which occurs in all the living organisms present on this earth, okay? Because in the process of transportation, what happens is there are certain important substances, okay? So there are some important substances. Let's take the example like nutrients, uh, then we have hormones, enzymes, antibodies, etc. Okay, so these are the important substances which are generally present in the body of all living organisms. Okay, and we also know that the body of all living organisms also produces waste products. Okay, they also produces waste product. Okay, so uh, in the process of transportation, these important substances as well as waste products actually move across the body of the living organism. And this happens with the help of the transport system of that particular organism. Now when we specifically talk about plants, so in case of plants, transportation is generally uh, the process which actually involves the movement of water, necessary nutrients. Necessary nutrients includes minerals, sucrose, amino acids, gases, and hormones to all the parts of the plant for its survival, okay? So, transportation is a process in which uh, 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 substances like water, necessary nutrients like minerals, sucrose, amino acids, gases, and hormones, they move to all the parts of the plant for its survival, okay? Now, why this transportation process is actually important for plants? There are different reasons uh, for this. So we will learn about it one by one, okay? First one is carbon dioxide and oxygen gas, okay? These are actually the gases, okay? So in the process of photosynthesis, for the process of photosynthesis, we know plant requires carbon dioxide gas, okay? Plant requires carbon dioxide gas for the process of photosynthesis and they release oxygen as the byproduct in the process of photosynthesis. About this you have already uh, you know learned in unit 6 plant nutrition okay. In unit 6 plant nutrition we have already discussed about this. So this carbon dioxide gas once it is absorbed uh, by the leaves from the atmosphere so it now it moves to different cells for the process of uh, photosynthesis with the help of transport system of the plant okay. And similarly oxygen gas also uh, is the oxygen gas is actually released as a byproduct of photosynthesis. So this oxygen gas is released outside the leaves, okay, by the plant. So this oxygen gas is also moved in the plant with the help of transport system of the plant. Next is uh, water and minerals, okay. So this is water and minerals. Now this we have already studied in uh, lower grades that all the plants they have roots, okay. And the roots of this plant actually absorbs water and minerals from the soil, okay? Roots and plants absorbs water and minerals from the soils, soil, okay? Now, uh, what happens is uh, the roots of the plant alone cannot consume or cannot utilize this entire water and minerals. Roots actually have to share this water and minerals with the uh, different parts of the plant. Now from roots, this water and minerals move to different parts of the plant with the help of transport system, okay. Last one is the uh, sucrose and amino acids. Now we know that in the process of photosynthesis, okay, in the process of photosynthesis, a very simple uh, sugar is produced which is called glucose. Now you know that glucose is highly soluble in water, isn't it? It's highly soluble in water. So uh, this photosynthesis process occurs in leaves. That means glucose is produced in leaves. 
but now glucose uh, leaves alone cannot utilize or consume this entire glucose okay this glucose has to be transported to different parts of the plant okay so this glucose actually first gets converted into sucrose okay glucose gets converted into sucrose and then the sucrose is actually transported to different parts of the plant with the help of transport system okay and this glucose is also converted into amino acids because amino acids are important for the process of protein formation okay every protein which is present in our body in any form or in the body of any living organism in any form is made up of amino acids so this glucose also gets converted into amino acids and this amino acids are also transported to different parts of the plant with the help of plants transport system so now let's see this transport system of plants is made up of what generally uh, the transport system in plants are made up of specialized tissues which are known as vascular tissues or conducting tissues okay vascular or conducting tissues here the meaning of this term vascular is to transport okay to transport or to conduct okay so this is a uh, transport system in plants okay so transport system in plants is made up of specialized tissues which are called vascular tissues or conducting tissues now these vascular tissues are of two types xylem vessel and phloem vessel okay now one by one let's learn about the adaptation and function of each xylem vessel and phloem vessel so first one is xylem vessel okay uh, so the structure and adaptation is these xylem vessels are elongated dead cells okay dead cells means there is no cytoplasm and no nucleus present in this uh, xylem vessel so remember xylem vessels are actually the elongated cells like this okay and inside the uh, inside this xylem vessel cytoplasm and nucleus is absent okay hence uh, as uh, xylem vessels are dead cells that means there is no cytoplasm and nucleus inside them that uh, then obviously these xylem vessels are hollow from inside okay now these xylem vessel another very important point is that these elongated cells of xylem vessels are arranged end to end okay end to end this means this is one cell okay this is one cell and for example this is the second this is the second cell second xylem cell of xylem vessel this is the third cell of xylem vessel okay fourth cell of xylem vessel for example so all these cells of xylem vessel they are arranged end to end that means one above the other the meaning of this end to end is one above the other next very important uh, structural adaptation of xylem vessel is that end walls in xylem are absent this is very important okay the, uh, because of this particular adaptation only xylem vessel is actually you know able to conduct or transport uh substances throughout the plant okay so end walls are absent the meaning of end walls is for example we have two cells this is one cell okay and this is second cell so this uh, particular line okay the, uh, this part of the cell is actually known as end wall okay this particular part is actually known as end wall so in case of xylem vessel cells uh, these end walls are actually absent now just imagine you have cells uh, in which end walls are absent like this okay you have cells in which end walls are absent and now if you will place these cells in which end walls are absent one above the other so what will happen they will form a continuous long channel okay it would be like a long pipe okay so they form the continuous long channel it it would be like a long pipe okay long tubular pipe okay so, and uh, because of the absence of end wall substances can easily move through the xylem vessel okay the last adaptation of xylem vessel is uh, we know that this plant cells they actually have cell wall okay and Uh, cell wall is made up of a polysaccharide a kind of carbohydrate which is called 
cellulose okay but the cell wall of this xylem vessel alone okay cell wall of the xylem vessel has the deposition of another very important or you can say you know very strong polysaccharide which is called lignin okay so in in the cells of uh, or you can say in the cell wall of uh, xylem vessel lignin is deposited along with the cellulose okay and this lignin is a very strong or uh, you can say very hard or very tough polysaccharide okay now uh, uh, so understand uh, the uh, structural adaptations once again xylem vessels are elongated dead cells okay elongated means they are long okay dead cells means they inside uh, um, xylem vessels cytoplasm and nucleus is absent okay hence they are hollow form inside okay and they are arranged end to end end to end means one above the other okay and in them these end walls are absent end, end walls means uh, the layer of cell present between two adjacent cells okay and uh, in the cell wall of the xylem vessel lignin is deposited lignin is a very strong very tough polysaccharide a type of carbohydrate okay so lignin is deposited in the cell walls of xylem vessel along with cellulose now uh, all these adaptations are useful for plant uh, because the function of this xylem vessel is to conduct or to transport water and minerals okay water and minerals okay across the plant now who absorbs water and minerals water and minerals are actually absorbed by roots okay water and minerals are actually absorbed by the roots of the plant okay now once this water and minerals are absorbed by the roots roots alone cannot keep this water and mineral it has to be transported to different parts of the plant okay and who does that this function is done by a type of vascular tissue present in the plant and the name of this vascular tissue is xylem vessel okay now see xylem vessel is actually adapted in order to uh, transport this water and minerals first one is it is elongated elongated means it's long enough to carry more amount of water in one particular time okay dead cells that means there is no cytoplasm and nucleus they are completely hollow form inside as these xylem vessels are completely hollow form inside they can perform the function of uh, transport of water and minerals very fast okay they are arranged end to end they are arranged end to end to form a uh, end to end to form a long uh, pipe like structure okay so that uh, water uh, channel so that a continuous water channel could be formed okay then end walls are absent end walls are absent to provide sufficient uh, space for the water to move along the xylem vessel and then deposition of lignin along with the uh, cellulose in cell wall this is something uh, not related to the transport of water and minerals this is because you have seen very thin and tall trees okay now this thin and tall trees are actually able to stand upright okay they are they are actually very strong and they are able to stand upright in the air that's because of the presence of lignin so lignin uh, in one way actually provides support to the long and tall trees okay it provides support to the entire plants so that they can stand upright in the air okay so these were the structure and adaptation now now we will look at, uh, at the picture this is the longitudinal section of the xylem vessel you can see here the uh, here actually this end wall was present okay so this is actually one particular this is first cell okay on the top of this first cell here you have second cell and this one is third cell okay so um, xylem vessel has thick cell wall containing lignin because of this property it provides uh, support to the long and tall trees to help them uh, and help them to stand upright in the air then uh, there is a space present in uh, xylem vessel okay this space has no cytoplasm and no nucleus it is completely hollow form inside so because of this nature because of uh, this uh, nature actually uh, because of this property of xylem vessel 
the water is able to you know pass through the xylem vessel continuously it forms a continuous channel and then uh, end walls are absent okay these end walls are actually absent because of this when water is continuously moving up through the plant so there is no disturbance in between okay water can form continuous channel and move through the long uh, trunk or long uh, branches of the plant this is the transverse section that means uh, it will cut it uh, uh, from the center it will cut this uh, xylem vessel from the center and now look at this xylem vessel from the top okay so xylem vessel looks like this okay and uh, it's actually here uh, it's made up made with the thick line because xylem uh, vessels are thick due to the deposition of lignin in cell wall one another very important point uh, there are these thin areas okay these are thin openings present in the cells of xylem vessel okay these openings are actually called pits this is because in case of plants only one uh, one particular uh, particular uh, you know long uh, tube of xylem vessel is not present okay there are many long tubes of uh, xylem vessels present next to each other okay now all these cells of xylem vessels are actually connected to the adjacent cell of xylem vessel with the help of a small gap or small opening which is known as pit okay so this pit is important to uh, transport certain substances between uh, adjacent uh, cells of xylem vessel okay uh, here is another diagram to uh, make you people understand the structure of xylem vessel xylem vessel is long elongated uh, xylem vessels are actually elongated dead cells no cytoplasm no nucleus end walls are absent okay no end walls between the cells okay and they have thick walls stiffened with lignin okay stiffened means made tight okay so the thick uh, thick walls of xylem are stiffened with the presence of lignin okay and water and minerals are transported or conducted by the xylem vessels and uh, these xylem vessels they actually conduct water and minerals only in one direction or only in one way that's why we say sometimes that the function of this xylem vessel is uni directional okay it conducts water and minerals or uh, unidirectional that means only in one direction this is the uh, uh, this is the picture of xylem vessel uh, from uh, electron microscope okay so these are the xylem vessels you can make out that these xylem vessels are completely hollow from inside next is function this we have already discussed the xylem vessel helps in transportation of water and minerals from root to the stems and leaves of the plant okay it transports water in one direction from downward to upward direction because we know that for example if this is tree so roots uh, our roots absorb water and minerals okay water and minerals are absorbed by the roots and this roots have to give it to different stems and leaves okay so from downward to upward direction so water and minerals they move uh, by xylem vessels from downward to upward direction and next is due to deposition of lignin xylem helps tall plants to stand upright and straight next tissue is uh, phloem vessel okay phloem vessel is the second type of uh, vascular tissue present in the plants uh, first in uh, one brief statement i'll tell you the function of phloem vessel is to conduct to conduct sucrose or you can say food okay so the function of phloem vessel is to conduct sucrose and amino acids or you can simply say to conduct sucrose and food okay now uh, how this phloem vessel is actually adapted in order to conduct sucrose and amino acids or food across the plant okay now this uh, these are uh, actually like uh, xylem vessel these are also elongated cells but these are living cells remember xylem vessels were dead cells but phloem vessels are living cells in them cytoplasm is present but nucleus is absent okay 
Now, like the xylem vessel, these cells are also arranged end to end. End to end means one above the other. Okay, one above the other. In uh, phloem vessels, end walls are present. In case of xylem vessels, end walls were absent, completely absent. But here in phloem vessels, end walls are actually present, and they form a perforated sieve plate. The meaning of this term sieve is small. Holes. Okay, so uh, the end walls of these cells. For example, this is one phloem vessel, and this is the second phloem vessel. Okay, so here the end wall of this uh, vessels they actually have small holes in them. Okay, that's why they it's written here perforated sieve plate. So this end wall with small hole is actually known as sieve plate. Okay. Hence, phloem cells are also called sieve tube elements. Because of the presence of sieve plate, phloem vessels are also known as sieve tube elements. In case of phloem uh, vessels in cell wall, lignin is absent. Okay, in xylem, lignin was present, but here lignin is absent. And each uh, each sieve tube element actually has uh, companion cells around it. Okay, so each sieve tube element has companion cell around it okay next to it and this companion cell actually provides xylem vessel uh, with the uh, any uh, requirement which xylem vessel has okay so if xylem vessel has, and this companion cell actually provides phloem vessel with any requirement it has okay so if phloem vessel has any requirement it may requires any extra nutrients or any other substance or any other thing then companion cell provides phloem vessel with it okay so so these were the structural adaptations of phloem vessel okay elongated living cells cytoplasm is present but nucleus is absent then they are arranged end to end end plate is not completely absent end plate is uh, end walls are not completely absent they are actually present with small perforations or holes in them so this end walls with the small holes in them is known as sieve plate hence the phloem vessel is also called sieve tube elements lignin is absent in the cell wall and each sieve tube element has companion cell next to it this companion cell present next to the phloem vessel actually provides phloem vessel with any of the nutrients which it want okay and uh, uh, the function of phloem vessel is to transport or to conduct sucrose and amino acids or other food items for, from different uh, parts of the plant to different parts. This is the diagram. Okay, so here you can see uh, the longitudinal section of the phloem vessel. This is one uh, phloem vessel. This is the first one. This is second one, and this is here. You have third one. Okay. So between each cell, this uh, sieve plate is present. Okay, this is also sieve plate. Okay, end walls are not completely removed. Sieve plates. And next to this uh, phloem vessel, we have a companion cell, which has uh, nucleus as well as dense cytoplasm. And here we have cell wall. This cell wall contains cellulose, but there is no lignin. Then sieve to sieve tube containing strands of cytoplasm. Okay. Here we have uh, strands of cytoplasm. Uh, cytoplasm. That means cytoplasm is present, but nucleus is absent. Okay, and then this sieve plate is formed from end walls of sieve tube elements. This is uh, another picture which actually shows the, the structure of phloem vessel. Okay, cells have walls with perforations. That means uh, the cells of phloem vessels they have end walls present between them, but with perforation. Perforation means small holes okay and uh, unlike xylem vessel phloem vessels transports substances in two direction, directions hence it is also called bi uh, bi directional okay it is also called bi directional okay so remember phloem vessel uh, they transports food substances like sucrose and amino acids from leaf or stem 
to roots of the plant as well as from root to stem and leaves of the plant okay so it can transport uh, food substances in any direction from upward to downward downward or from downward to upward okay hence it is bidirectional that means two way flow okay so this is important remember xylem transports water and minerals only in one direction from downward to upwards and phloem transports food substances like sucrose and amino acids in both the directions from downward to upward as well as from upward to downward this is the picture of uh, phloem vessel under electron microscope you can uh, notice or you can see it clearly the sieve plate okay this is actually one sieve tube element this is actually a companion cell companion cell and this is your sieve tube element okay this sieve tube element is actually also known as phloem vessel okay you know that in phloem vessels end walls are present okay they are not completely absent end walls are present with perforations perforations means small holes so these are the small holes of sieve tube or sieve plate okay sieve plate of phloem vessel okay so uh, this was the structure of uh, phloem vessel under electron microscope now the functions of phloem vessel phloem vessels actually helps in transportation of food nutrients like sucrose and amino acids up and down the plant okay and this process of transport of uh, food materials like sucrose and amino acids across the plant is actually known as translocation so simply you can write down phloem vessels helps in translocation of food substances like sucrose and amino acids across the plant and uh, this ha translocation happens between uh, two places okay so it actually happens between uh, two areas of the plant first one is the area where these substances that means sucrose and amino acids are made okay so this area where sucrose and amino acids are made or they are built up are actually known as source okay and uh, the area where uh, where this sucrose and amino acids are required area in the plant where sucrose and amino acids will be used or stored okay or where it will be transported so that area is actually known as sink okay so translocation process always starts from source and ends up at sink so phloem vessels always transport food items like sucrose and, and amino acids from source to sink there are examples uh, like during winter season uh, what happens is many plants have no leaves okay so phloem tubes they transport dissolved sucrose and amino acids from the storage organs to other parts of the plant so that respiration can continue so this you know that during winter season most of the plants they lose their leaf okay and as most of the plants they do not have leaves so what happens in them is this phloem vessel will actually transport sucrose and amino acids from uh, the storage uh, organ okay or from the organ in which the plant has stored sufficient amount of sucrose so from that particular organ and this is called source to the organ where the sucrose will be actually used up and it could be any part of the plant okay and this part of the plant is called sink where the sucrose will be used up okay so from source to sink the sucrose or the amino acid is transported next is during a uh, growth period so uh, during growth period especially during spring the storage organs okay roots are one of the storage organ root is actually one of the best example of storage organ so during a growth period what happens is this sucrose is actually transported from storage organs like root and this root acts as a source to many or to different growing areas of the plant okay this could be like you know tip of any branch or maybe the bud okay because this bud of the plant uh, has to change into the flower okay so like this okay so it transports to different growing areas of the plant from storage organ so storage organ is uh, source and the growing area is sink and uh, one more example is after the plant has grown so usually during summer season the leaves of the plant are actually photosynthesizing and producing large quantities of sugars okay 
so they become uh, the source so uh, after the process of photosynthesis the leaves of the plant actually becomes source and the roots become sink okay so uh, roots become sink because these roots will store excess of sucrose which is uh, present in plant in the form of starch until it is needed again okay so we all have consumed potatoes potatoes are rich in starch okay so how these potatoes are actually formed these potatoes are formed because of the deposition of sucrose in them okay and uh, uh, this uh, potato now becomes the sink and leaves where glucose is made it's actually source so this glucose is converted into sucrose first and then it is transported with the help of flowing vessel to sink okay where it can be used up or restored so in uh, only this much in this video in next video we are going to discuss about the location of these vascular tissues in dicot root stem and leaf